From its very first episode, Cops burst onto TV screens with its brash, in-your-face realism. Take her. Come here, take her. And in the 90s, audiences couldn't get enough. It was a mind blower. In my town, it was what everybody was talking about. Back room's okay. clear. All right, double check your rooms real quick. Double check them. What caught people's attention was you can go to your 9 to 5 job, come home at night, and have dinner and sit down in front of the TV and basically be put in the passenger seat of a, of a police car. With its raw, fly-on-the-wall style, Cops was an edge-of-your-seat adrenaline rush. Yep, you were under arrest. You figured that out all by yourself, didn't you? They were in that car, they were in that foot chase, they were in that fight, and they were there handcuffing that guy with you. you gotta have a phone again. The show was unlike anything television audiences had ever seen. I was seeing on primetime TV the same things I was shooting with my camera in a news setting. Sheriff's Department search warrant. I mean, this is how it truly is. Sheriff's Department, get down. Down on the ground, I got it. Okay. It's just really, really good television. Real life, raw, uncut, Some good weeks. This is brand new to television. But what ends up happening with a show like Cops is they can pick and choose what they portray to give us this vision of policing that is not only inaccurate, but is deeply dangerous. Your boyfriend is letting you take the fall for the drug. The success of this new kind of television relied on a very old obsession. America has always had a fascination with crime and cop shows. That vice that Tubbs and Crockett were fighting in Miami, it looked nothing like the new reality police were facing. Miami, vice, New York. It was amidst this late 80s, early 90s era of this war on drugs. Narcotics violations, robberies, and sexual assaults were up 10 and a half percent. Crack cocaine use leads President Reagan to double down on the so-called war on drugs. Drugs are menacing our society. They're threatening our values and undercutting our institutions. They're killing our children. So won't you join us in this great new national crusade? And as drug-fueled violent crime rises, TV shows glamorizing police work start to lose their luster. So really, cops came at the perfect time. There was this idea from an individual named John Langley he had a documentary called Cocaine Blues. Malcolm Barber and John Langley got together and made this film documentary. And it was real raw. In the past, you might see somebody with, at a party with a, with a drink in their hand. And uh, now in feature films, you see people with Coke spoons in their nose. The two young producers of Cocaine Blues soon land a job bringing its realism to television. Why cocaine? When I first really got involved with them, they were doing live broadcasts. Sometime during the course of this live program, you'll be a witness as a pusher goes down for the count. After watching dozens of these raids from very close up. And it was a two-hour live show with inserts of taped drug raids. The idea is to hit swiftly and with overwhelming force. Surprise and shock are the best protection, not only for the officers. I was thinking that, man, I don't want to work on this show because you could get shot doing this thing. Because we didn't have any any bulletproof vest, and I could feel this person pushing me into this place with that we had fogged. Couldn't see anything. And we all could have been shot there. But I looked over my shoulder, and it's Geraldo pushing me in the door. So the excitement was definitely there. Oh, my gosh. Cool. All right, the deal went down. It's all on the hidden camera. Basically, While working on the special, ounces, John Langley's crew stumbles on something that will change television. Halfway through, Geraldo had to leave. And so I threw a mic on to the key man that would actually key the door of where we were going to raid. And I would say, you know, we just need to have you talk us through. Anybody's got a set of cups with this guy? So for the next few hours, we filmed all these drug raids with just the officers narrating. Fully loaded Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. Oh, excuse me, 44 Special. Would have ruined our day. There's no narrators, there's no host. These are uh, Teflon-coated bullets. You're simply a crew 
following along with a police department, and that's how COPS was born. When COPS finally makes it to air on March 11, 1989, it delivers can't-look-away realism rarely seen on the small screen. And she was like, oh, man, this is awesome. This is going to be good. Watch this. This is going to be great. You crawl on your hands and knees, right, Todd? The format of COPS is simple. Each episode tracks three stories with police kicking ass off the top. What producers see as comic relief in the middle. Now How much you had to drink, Mary? Tell me that. Not nearly enough. <laughs> hey, come on, Mary. Come on, yeah, Mary. Hey, come on, Mary. Mary. And a finale that shows police serving and protecting. How do you how do you intend to get some food for them? Uh, well, other than they already had supper tonight, mm -hmm. she'll be here first thing in the morning. To carry something. You? What it does is perpetuate this idea that there are superheroes. So this is a way in which cops continuously constructs their idea of criminal and their idea of those who are on the right side of the law. I don't think your dad wants to see you come to heaven this way. Charles, I love you! I think what John Langley wanted to accomplish with the show right Cops there. was to show the true nature of what policing is. But it turns out John Langley didn't control which aspects of policing the audience got to see. The cops did. These law enforcement agencies had editorial control. The whole ecosystem of policing is getting this sort of washed sort of look, this fairy tale version. 